Hello, and welcome to this more advanced tutorial on OBS Studio Connectivity with the Mix It Up app. To get started, we're going to actually get you set up so that we can actually connect to OBS Studio before we actually even get into anything involved with Mix It Up. So to start off with, we'd like you to navigate to your installation folder where Mix It Up is. This could be where you zipped it up or where you've actually installed it. For ease, if you want to get access to that folder, simply click on the triple dot up here and then click on Installation Folder. This will open up a window that will take you exactly to where your installation folder for Mix It Up is. From here, you want to navigate into the folder titled OBS, and there will be an executable in here to install the OBS WebSocket installation. This will allow Mix It Up to connect on behalf of you to OBS and be able to change and edit settings that are in there. So go through this setup first, and once you're done, we'll return back to Mix It Up. Now that you've completed your installation of the OBS Studio WebSocket controller, we'll be able to actually establish our connection to OBS Studio. To start with, open up OBS Studio, like here, our example here, and from here you're going to go up to the Tools menu and click under WebSocket Server Settings here at the top. If you don't see this, try closing down and restarting OBS Studio, or you might need to restart your PC. Once you click this option, you'll see a connection window here that'll tell you what server port we allowed the WebSocket to connect to, and a password if you'd like to supply it. Currently, you can leave this disabled if you just want to connect to it very simple. By default, we are going to use this default server port 4444 for our MixItUp connection. So let's remember that for the time being. After you're all set with that and you've enabled it, you can return back to mix it up. From here, you'll notice that we have a web address that's connecting to the local IP on your machine. If you're trying to control another machine or you have to do it a different IP address, just swap this in here. And then ensure that port 4444 is still selected here as well too. If you entered a password in on that previous menu, simply type the password in here and then click Enable OBS. From here, we'll get a loading screen and if everything is all well and good, you should hear a little connection chime or see an alert pop off. Otherwise, you'll see a status message that might give you some indication of what could be going wrong at that point. Now that we have OBS Studio connected to our MixUp installation, let's start by actually setting up something in our scene that we can interact with just to show a quick example. So let's go back to OBS Studio here, and we're actually just going to use this example scene I've set up here to get us going. So let's just add a source in here. Um, what should we do? Let's just make a text source. Keep it basic for right now. And we'll just call this uh, YouTube text. Click OK. All right. Um, it's not really concerning what we put in here for the time being. This is more just to showcase what we can do. So we'll just say, hello world here. We'll make this color red so it stands out a bit. And we'll put this somewhere in the center so it makes it fairly obvious to see. We'll expand it out. Beautiful. Look how great that looks. But that's not the issue for right now. So we have this piece of source here that we're going to actually use for our stuff here. We're just going to call it YouTube text. We're now going to go back to our Mix It Up installation here. And we're going to actually do an action that can interact with this in some way. So let's go back here. Let's just create a very basic custom chat command to get us going for right now. Okay, let's start off our command very basic like we normally do. We'll just call it test. We'll make our command that we enter in chat simply be test. And now we're going to start by adding an actual action to interact with OBS Studio. So from the drop down, select OBS Studio as an action. Click the Add button. And now we'll actually take a look at all the dips and types of OBS Studio actions you can perform, such as the Scene Transition action, which lets you change between scenes, the Source Visibility action, which lets you disable or enable the visibility of a source, the Text Source action, which allows you to do the same as a source visibility, but also change the text that's inside of a text source specifically, and the web browser source action, which just like source visibility as well, lets you enable or disable the visibility of a web browser source, but also change the URL that that web browser source points to. Um, for basicness, we're just going to start off with a source visibility action, and we'll transition to some later ones after to show a few other examples. So select source visibility, and you'll see two options are present here. One will ask you for the name of the source you wish to work with, and the other is a checkbox simply saying whether you want this source to become visible or become invisible. And the way this checkbox works is it doesn't care about what the current state of the source is. It's only telling about what the source will become after this. So in this case, if I leave this checkbox unchecked, 
that means I'm going to turn something not visible or invisible, depending on how you want to look at it. Meaning if it was already visible, it will become invisible. If it was already invisible, it will remain invisible. So since our thing is already shown back here, we're going to not check this, meaning we're going to turn it invisible. Now in the source text box, we're simply going to type the name of our source, which is YouTube text down here, and then we're going to click save. Now to run this test, all we need to do is just simply click the play, the play button here. I'm going to scroll down so you can see it. And once I click play, boom, our source is gone. Quick and easy. Now if I continue to hit the play button, notice how it doesn't come back because the checkbox is simply checked to not visible. If I go back in and edit this again, I can change this checkbox to be visible now. Save, and when I click play, Hello World is back. Easy peasy, nothing too crazy for right now. Okay, let's get a little more interesting now then. Let's go back in and edit our command, go to OBS Studio, and we're gonna switch this from source visibility to text source. Now you'll notice it keeps a lot of the same settings over, which is nice, it's our same source YouTube text. We're gonna keep it visible for right now. Now from here, what I can do is actually edit what text appears in the source for us. So whatever text is there already is gonna get overwritten with whatever we wanna put in here. So it says, hello world for right now, let's say, goodbye world. Now, the way OBS Studio text works is a little bit different than what you'd imagine. There's a few little things we have to work around just to get things to work correctly, unfortunately. So from here, we're gonna simply change this file path here and take a look at this here. This is gonna be used for us to actually make the OBS Studio change. So this is the text we wanna change it to. This file is gonna contain the text that will become what the actual text file gets changed to. So to use this, we're gonna simply right click and we're gonna copy this path here. We're gonna hold on to this for the moment and we're gonna save this. We now need to go back into OBS Studio, right click and properties the text file. From here, if you scroll down, there he is. Ah, here it is. Read from file. There's a little checkbox. It's always hidden to me, to be honest. We're going to check this read from file checkbox here, and we're going to put in a file path here that's going to allow us to actually point to that same file path that we used up here. Now, why we have to do that is the way OBS Studio works with its text or text setup is currently we cannot directly interact with the um, source text that we want to. We have to use this file path to get around this. You might see this in a lot of other bots as well. This is currently the way that we can interact with it to the best of our ability. So this file path right here that we have here, we're going to take this path and we're going to use this in the browse button for when we navigate to it. If you want to do it, simply just take it and paste it in the file path and hit enter and there's our file path. Now that we've done with that, we're going to simply click the OK button and you'll notice right now that the text is now gone. The reason is, is that the default text that's normally set there, it relies on the file to actually say what's inside of here. Now, since there's nothing in the file, since we just made it, it's gonna be completely blank. So now, if I go back to here, and I save this action, and I click the play button, what's gonna happen is, in a couple of steps, one, when you hit the play button, it's going to take the text that we added here, goodbye world, and it's going to put it into this text file. Once that text file is updated, OBS Studio will be looking to see when that file is changed. When it detects that that file is changed, it's going to read the contents of the file and then put whatever's in that file into this text source that's here. So we'll click the play button and we notice, takes a second, goodbye world has now been put in there. Now one thing to note is, you need to be a little bit careful about how you do sizing because you'll notice hello world fit very nicely in the center, but goodbye world is now shot off a little bit. So that's more you're just going to have to do some tweaking in OBS Studio to really see where you want to have things positioned and consider the size of the text that's going to fit in there as well too. And with that, we're going to close out our tutorial here on connecting with OBS Studio with Mix It Up. We'll be rolling out some more advanced tutorials down later down the line that'll go through some other scenarios that you can do with to interact with either OBS Studio or in the following tutorial after this, XSplit. Um, some of those will be covering stuff you've seen in other streams, such as an on-screen counter, being able to do some advanced scene transitions, or work with a few di different other scene transitions with sources and other things. So keep an eye out for those tutorials down the line. And thank you very much again for watching this video. Have a great day.